The hip is a true ball and socket joint. This arrangement gives the hip the large amount of motion needed for daily activities like walking, squatting, and stair climbing. Understanding how the different layers of the hip are arranged and connected can help you understand how the hip works, how it can be injured, and how challenging recovery can be when this joint is injured or damaged by arthritis. The deepest layer of the hip includes the bones and the joints. The next layer is made up of the ligaments of the joint capsule. And finally, these ligaments are covered by the important tendons and the muscles that help move the leg. The important structures of the hip can be divided into several categories. These include bones and joints, ligaments and tendons, muscles, nerves, blood vessels, and bursa. The bones that form the hip are the femur or the thigh bone and the pelvis. The top end of the femur is shaped like a ball. This ball is called the femoral head. The femoral head fits into a round socket on the side of the pelvis. This socket is called the acetabulum. The femoral head is attached to the rest of the femur by a short section of bone called the femoral neck. A large bump juts outward from the top of the femur next to the femoral neck. This bump, called the greater trochanter, can be felt along the side of your hip. Large and important muscles connect to the greater trochanter. Articular cartilage is the material that covers the ends of the bones of any joint. Articular cartilage is about one quarter of an inch thick in the large weight-bearing joints like the hip. Articular cartilage is white and shiny and has a rubbery consistency. It is slippery which allows the joint surfaces to slide against one another without causing any damage. The function of articular cartilage is to absorb shock and provide an extremely smooth surface to make motion easier. We have articular cartilage essentially everywhere that two bony surfaces move against one another or articulate. In the hip, articular cartilage covers the end of the femur and the socket portion of the acetabulum in the pelvis. The cartilage is especially thick in the upper and back part of the socket, as this is where most of the force occurs during walking and running. Ligaments are soft tissue structures that connect bones to bones. There are several important ligaments in and around the hip. Surrounding the hip joint, the joint capsule is formed by a group of strong ligaments that connect the top of the femur to the acetabulum. A joint capsule is a watertight sac that surrounds a joint. These ligaments of the joint capsule are the main source of stability for the hip. They help hold the femoral head in place in the acetabulum or socket. A small ligament connects the very tip of the femoral head to the acetabulum. This ligament, called the ligamentum teres, doesn't play a role in controlling hip movement like the main hip ligaments. It does, however, have a small artery within the ligament that brings a very small blood supply to part of the femoral head. Tendons are soft tissue structures that connect muscles to bones. A long tendon band, called the iliotibial band, runs alongside the femur from the hip to the knee. The iliotibial band provides a connection point for several of the large hip muscles. A tight iliotibial band can cause hip and knee problems. A special type of ligament forms a unique structure inside the hip called the labrum. The labrum is attached almost completely around the edge of the acetabulum. The shape and the way the labrum is attached create a deeper cup for the acetabular socket. This small rim of cartilage can be injured and cause pain and clicking in the hip joint. The hip is surrounded by large, thick muscles. Three gluteal muscles, the gluteus minimus, gluteus medius, and gluteus maximus make up the muscles of the buttock on the back of the hip. These muscles extend or pull the thigh backwards and abduct or pull the thigh away from the other leg. 
These muscles are also important for keeping the pelvis level as we shift the weight from one leg to the other during walking. The inner thighs form by the adductor muscles. The main action of the adductors is to pull the leg inward toward the other leg. The muscles that flex the hip or pull the thigh forward are in front of the hip joint. These include the iliopsoas and the rectus femoris. The iliopsoas muscle is a very deep muscle that begins attached to the lower spine. It travels out of the pelvis to connect on the inside edge of the upper femur. The rectus femoris is one of the quadriceps muscles, the large group of muscles on the front of the thigh. There's also a small, thin, strap-like muscle called the sartorius muscle that runs from the pelvis across the knee and connects to the upper tibia just below the knee joint. Several small muscles travel from inside the pelvis across the back of the hip joint and attach to the back of the upper femur. These muscles help to stabilize the hip joint and rotate the leg outwards. Together as a group, these muscles are called the external rotators of the hip. Finally, the hamstring muscles run down the back of the thigh. These muscles originate at the bottom of the pelvis. Because the hamstring muscles cross the back of the hip joint on their way to the knee, they help to extend the hip, pulling it backwards. All of the nerves that travel down the thigh pass by the hip. The main nerves are the femoral nerve in front and the sciatic nerve in the back of the hip. A smaller nerve, called the obturator nerve, also goes to the inside of the hip. These nerves carry the signals from the brain to the muscles that move the hip. The nerves also carry signals back to the brain about sensations such as touch, pain, and temperature. Traveling along with the nerves are the large vessels that supply the lower limb with blood. The large femoral artery begins deep within the pelvis. It passes by the front of the hip area and goes down toward the inner edge of the knee. If you place your hand on the front of your upper thigh, you may be able to feel the pulsing of this large artery. The femoral artery has a deep branch called the profunda femoris. Profunda means deep. The profunda femoris sends two vessels that go through the hip joint capsule. These vessels are the main blood supply for the femoral head. As mentioned earlier, the ligamentum teres contains a small blood vessel that gives a very small supply of blood to the top of the femoral head. Other small vessels form within the pelvis and supply the back portion of the buttocks and hip. Where friction occurs between muscles, tendons, and bones, there is usually a structure called a bursa. A bursa is a thin sac of tissue that contains fluid to lubricate the area and reduce friction. The bursa is a normal structure that is produced by the body in response to friction between two structures. A bursa that sometimes causes problems in the hip is sandwiched between the bump on the outer hip, the greater trochanter, and the muscles and tendons that cross over the bump. This bursa, called the greater trochanteric bursa, can become irritated and inflamed, causing a condition called trochanteric bursitis. Another bursa sits between the iliopsoas muscle and the hip joint where the iliopsoas tendon passes in front of the hip joint. When this bursa becomes inflamed, the condition is called iliopsoas bursitis. A third bursa covers the ischial tuberosity, the bump of bone in your buttocks that you sit on. And again, inflammation of this bursa is called ischial bursitis. As you can see, the hip is complex with a design that provides a great amount of stability. It also allows good mobility and range of motion for doing a wide range of daily activities. Many powerful muscles connect to and cross by the hip joint, making it possible for us to accelerate quickly during actions like running and jumping.